Hi, welcome back to BusyBots. Thanks for stopping by. I printed these out recently for someone, and it was a pretty interesting set of parts. I thought I'd show them to you. These are parts for a Philostruder, the Philostruder kit. I'll provide the links in the notes below the video. And what's in interesting about this part is that uh, one of the three pieces, this is the, uh, this is a funnel where you put your plastic pellets in. This is the hopper, and this is a switch box. The hopper required not only external support, but, an, oh, but also internal support, and that's what I wanted to show you. The switch box is a fairly straightforward part. didn't require any support. Um, it did have this uh, mounting tab here, which sometimes can be a little tricky to get the holes in like that. Uh, I'll share my settings that I used in Slicer to uh, get the best print quality I could, and good strength. This is 40% infill, uh, although I think that the small surface area setting in... Uh, Slicer took effect, and this is nearly solid, very strong. Hard to show you, I guess, on the video, but I'm squeezing pretty hard. This is a, it's a strong, solid part. Should have no problem mounting there and, and holding the switches. This is the funnel. It gets mounted on top of the hopper, and it has a nice, um, I don't know if you can see it, a nice ramped surface there in the bottom for nice feeding. And this was a bridge, it's printed in this orientation. By the way, this is a Mendel Max. Printed them right here uh, using uh, white ABS filament from Ultibots. Uh, real nice filament, by the way. It was my first time to use it. Anyhow, this was a bridge here. And you can see that uh, the first layer or two um, are a little loose from the bridging, but that's okay. Uh, if needed, they can be pulled off or sanded down and then it'll fit here on the hopper. This is the most interesting part. This is the hopper. And what's interesting about this is that it required support in order to print these steep angles, both outside and also inside this channel. And I used Slicer 097, and what I found with Slicer 097 is that first I tried setting the, the uh, extrusion width to about 60% to give me some thinner and finer support. And I checked the G-code, and Slicer just wasn't outputting any support at all. I found I had to leave the um, extrusion width at the default 100% uh, or set the field to zero in order to get the, the uh, support to generate. And that's fine. I was hoping to get a little thinner support, but uh, it's still fairly flexible and shouldn't be too difficult to remove. Um, but what's interesting about this part is that it's got support inside this channel, okay, because the top of, the, um, of this channel needed support as well. So you can see it if you look down into the neck of the hopper. Right down in here, support, okay, all that is in support, runs all the way through here, and you can also see it down in here. And that'll be a little more difficult to remove, but it's, it's the, same, uh, the same material as what this Let's is. Let's take a quick look at Thingiverse. And, uh, By the way, a tip for navigating Thingiverse is you can see this here, the format, thing, colon, and then the number. Sometimes you'll be on a forum or maybe IRC chat, and someone will give you the thing number. This is how you do it. You just put in this format here, and then put the thing number after the colon. So you can see a photo of the assembled unit. It comes in three different STLs. You can preview each one individually down here. This is the hopper, the, the part that requires the support down below and inside the channel. And here's the switch box. To download files from Thingiverse, click on the big download button. You can click each STL individually if you want to download just one or more of the set. If you want to download the whole thing, click on this download all files and you will receive this single zip file which contains all three. I've mentioned this in other videos but it's worth repeating, uh, especially when using support. Do a preview of your, of your G-code. It gives you a really good idea of what you're going to get rather than spending all that time and uh, effort printing something before you look at the G-code. So you can see very clearly the support that's running underneath this channel. The, the way to read this is the white are, is printing moves and the blue are travel moves. So there's nothing, uh, you won't end up with anything printed where the blue is, which is just what we want here in this case. You can see the support. I set the spacing to five millimeters. And there's also support inside. It's a little tricky to zoom around uh, in here, show you, but if you took enough time to learn how to navigate this tool, you could look down inside and you can actually zoom right inside your model and you can see where the support will be printed inside of this. A little difficult to decipher, I think, on the video, but I did look through here and I was pretty satisfied that I was going to get a good print and it worked out real well. So I uh, recommend this um, G-Code viewer at buildlog.net.
Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. See you next time.